Ladies and gentlemen, it's almost BotCon 2014, which means it's time to do a casual Cyberverse look at Windraiser. And by that I mean it's time for us to UPSCALE our way to Beast Hunter's Deluxe Windraiser. And, damn, uh, these things are pretty big. These Terrorcons, sorry, Predacon upscale dudes are uh, really the, I think, the ultimate proof of concept, even though I really find myself flip-flopping on how I feel about Twin Strike Windraiser here sells this concept hardcore. I mean, he looks a lot like the Cyberverse one, that's for sure. His green's a little brighter, but I'm okay with that. And, uh, this guy, though, like, his wingspan... Oh, I'm sorry, did you not see it? Here, let me pull back even farther so you can see that wingspan. Here, let's bring in one of these other upscaly guys. Here, well, here's, uh, Twin Strike. He's kind of dwarfed by these wings. I'll bring in something you guys may have. Here's a deluxe beast hunter man. Look at the the wings, man. He's each wing is about as long as an Autobot is tall. That's a big ass wingspan. And this really feels like you're getting some bang for your buck just in terms of uh flap flap action. So this guy has a weapon bolted on him here. I just put it there because it's a thing I do. Um he has some points of articulation. His neck can wiggle. His legs are on universal joints. Uh, his tail, partly due to transformation, can bend. This means that you can also have him kind of stand up and uh, be in more of a perched, I'm gonna attack you kind of pose. His wing arms are on universal joints that let them do this. Uh, and there is a swivel here. Unfortunately, this is lost posability. And there's, there's more than one piece of lost posability, I think, uh, in this case. These are ball joints, those aren't. This means that the little guy can put his wings down like they're at a rest position. This guy, you straight up have to start transforming him to get his wings into a rest position, and it just doesn't work as well. Uh, I'm kind of bummed out that these were mushroom pegs, because these are losing a major critical piece of motion on, a, you know, a, not a super articulated toy already. Uh, also, his mouth, uh, his uh, little beak, his nasty little beak here can hold a 5mm thing uh, pretty well. That's a nice touch. And I really can't get over his wingspan en enough, man. I can't get over it enough. That means I like it a lot in Evangelese. Uh, it's big and it just sells this guy. His dragon mode, his beast mode, whatever you want to call it, is pretty freaking cool. His transformation is just like the Cyberverse toy. And it translates to this larger scale uh, pretty super well. Um, you can keep the wings... Uh, unfolded if you want. I fold them up just for the sake of, you know, this guy not having a huge amount of space getting uh, janked up behind him. And there's a lot of real solid clicks in this transformation. And then boom, you've got Windraiser in robot mode. And I like this guy. Uh, the ball jointed ankle, or ankles, the ball jointed elbows are no loss here. Because uh, on the original, once you got him into robot mode, I don't think they really did anything. Uh, in robot mode, in my opinion at least. Like, they would let him bend his elbows inwards like that, and that's just, that's not helping at all. This guy's robot mode really sells it, and the colors play well. I think he has a less awkward look than Twin Strike. He's got these big-ass wings that you can unfurl if you so choose, just to give him something big to cut you with. And, uh, topping it off, he just comes with a real mean-looking mace. This thing uh, has sculpting all over it to make it look like it's been cobbled together out of all kinds of technological, perhaps cybernetic junk. And uh, he can hold it to whack people with it. He can also hold it like a gun, using this peg if you want, and that's kind of silly because he's just meant to bonk you. In robot mode, his posability is pretty much the fact that he's got universal pin disc shoulders and hips like the rest. But uh, he also has a bicep swivel, which can do some stuff. And I just find he is the most expressive and, uh, I think the most characterful of the bunch. You can even, if you want, untransform his legs slightly to put in a, a sort of faux knee joint. It's, uh, it's... I think it's really, uh, asking a lot of someone to take that at face value as a knee joint, but it's there as an option for bending his leg a bit if you're, uh, finding yourself in the need to bend his leg. This guy is my favorite of the four by far. His dragon mode, just with the, the wingspan, it, it, as I said before, just like the Cyberverse toy, in fact, it sells it. Uh, these two guys together, I look at them and I'm just so sad that we're not going to get an Abominus that is like this tall. 
all the way up here. I know there are knockoff versions of the Cyberverse guys that are about that big, but I would have loved to see an Abominus with the amount of solidity and click and uh, and whatnot that are that goes into these larger dudes. Like they they are just made a bit beefier than their smaller counterparts, and that's why the upscale uh, terminology it's kind of accurate, but it sort of undersells I think the 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 physical uh, girth and oomphiness of these dudes. I mean, hey. Windraiser here, if you wanted to go for a flight, I mean, he can survive it pretty well. Uh, and he's got, you know, thin wingy bits, but nothing snapping off. So, I dig him. Uh, once again, all four of these guys uh, are not really worth tracking down at crazy import costs. They, they just simply aren't. Uh, it'll cost you, like, at least Canadian deluxe retail prices of, like, 16 bucks plus per, uh, taking into account taxes and things. And... I don't know. Uh, if these things were available in stores, man, would I be telling you, like, hey, if you see it on discount clearance, uh, the terror cons and smokescreen are worth your time. Terror cons, at least. Uh, most people will probably find those two to be the best, and I think many would agree with me that Windraiser just makes this concept somehow work when, on paper, it was one of the biggest moaning points last BotCon. So, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist. That's been some upscaled cyberverses. This whole thing is done, as far as I can tell. As far as anyone can tell, they are done with these. I'd love to see them return to this to do a couple of cyberverse toys that I think could really work at the scale, i.e. Hunger, Blight, and Ripper Snapper. But I'm not holding my breath to see that happen anytime soon. This was an experiment, and this led to stuff that's now on shelves that is not marketed towards the older collector. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's it for Upscaled Casual Cyberverse. Casual Cyberverse will return, and, you know, while it may be done getting upscaled, things might get a little mega-scaled. At least once or twice.